To depart in valor is the symbol of life. To be remembered with respect in itself is life. Wing Commander Karun Krishan Majumdar, DFC and Bar, affectionately known as Jumbo to his friends and admirers in the Indian and Royal Air Force, was truly an extraordinary individual. The story of his life is replete with splendid examples of dedication, devotion to duty and commitment. Jumbo was a man of tremendous courage and exceptional leadership qualities. He was not only a visionary and a patriot to the core, but indeed a pioneer in the true sense of the word. Born on the 6th of September 1913 at Calcutta in an illustrious and distinguished family of ardent nationalists, Karun's father, Mr. P. K. Majumdar, was a wealthy landlord and a practicing barrister, and his maternal grandfather was the famous W. C. Banerjee, who was the president of Indian National Congress. Karun was an intelligent student and excelled in studies. He took the entrance examination to join Royal Air Force Flying College, Cranwell, and stood second in order of merit amongst all Indians. In January 1932, Karun left for England. His seniors at Cranwell were Subrodo Mukherjee, H.C. Sarkar, Amarjeet Singh, Bupinder Singh, A.B. Avon, and S.P. Engineer. Majumdar's flying skills were exceptional and his instructors were delighted with his performance. In December 1933, Majumdar graduated from Royal Flying College as pilot officer and was posted to the Royal Air Force Army Cooperation Squadron for advanced training. In November 1934, pilot officer K.K. Majumdar was posted to number one squadron of the Indian Air Force at Drig Road, Karachi. As a flying officer, he was initiated into operations when No. 1 Squadron aircraft was employed in close support of the army engaged in suppressing the revolt of the frontier tribesmen. Sea flight with Karun as a crew member moved to Miranchar for operational duties where the flying in the hostile area was quite hazardous. The flight did 400 sorties in a month, an amazing feat, taking into account that the flight had only three Vapiti aircrafts. By now, Majumdar had earned the reputation of a daring and skillful flyer. On the 4th of November 1939, Karun, popularly known as Jumbo, was married to Prema Dutt at Jalandhar. The first sight my father had of my mother was at a tea party at Lahore where she was playing the piano and he was so absolutely stunned by her beauty that he followed her to Jalanda to her parental home and uh, there he pressed his suite and uh, they got married shortly after that. He absolutely adored my mother. In June 1940, after the outbreak of Second World War, Sea Flight, under the command of Flight Lieutenant Karundar, moved to Fort Sandman and replaced the Royal Air Force unit. Equipped with Hawker Hart aircraft, it was the first fully Indianized unit of the Indian Air Force. On the 27th of June 1941, Majumdar took over the command of No. 1 Squadron and in August 1941, the squadron was equipped with Lysander aircraft. Jumbo had returned from the northwest frontier with increased confidence in his own potential and he instilled the same in every member of his squadron. But because of the sheer breadth of his personality, his courage and his forthrightness, that was the reason he was given the affectionate nickname of Jumbo. He was a fearless man. And uh, he not only performed well in here, but in the battlefields of Europe, where he was awarded the DFC. I admired him as a man of highest grit, flying as well as ground. Extraordinary man, a patriot to the core. 
a stern disciplinarian, but he was an excellent flyer. So great was the urge and compassion in Jumbo to prove that Indian Air Force is better than the Royal Air Force that in September 1941, when number one IAF squadron and number 28 RAF squadron were grounded because of non-availability of tailwheel tires, Harjinder suggested a modification with wooden tailwheel but indicated that the test flight of this could be risky. Jumbo asserted that even if there was a single chance in a hundred to be successful, he would go for it. And they did it. Number one IAF squadron was flying, while number 28 RAF squadron kept waiting for the supply of tyres. Courage was one of the qualities that my father valued most in life. Courage, kindness and truthfulness. And in his diary he has made an entry saying, Courage pays greater dividends than timidity. On the 7th of December 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. The Japanese army had swept through Philippines, Singapore and Malaya and in early 1942 stood ready for their final sweep through the jungles of Burma to reach India. As the situation was becoming critical, number one squadron under the command of squadron leader K.K. Majumdar was ordered to move to Burma front. On the 6th of January 1942, number one squadron left Peshawar for Burma. The squadron was equipped with Lysanders which were slower and inferior in comparison to the Japanese fighters. Regardless of all this, the squadron arrived at Tuangu in the evening of 1st February 1942. Jumbo was a man of vision and foresight. He immediately, after landing, dispersed all the aircraft. As anticipated by Jumbo, in the early hours of morning, Japanese made two air raids on the Tuangu airfield, bombing it heavily, but they could not damage any Indian Air Force aircraft as they were camouflaged and well dispersed. It was believed that the Japanese raiders came from Huangshua across the border in Siam. Majumdar decided to repay the compliment and on the next morning he took his Lysander fitted with two bomb racks carrying 250 pound bombs under each wing and set course towards Huangshua airfield. In this brave deed, the New Zealanders of number 67 RAF squadron sent up two Buffalo aircraft to escort him. Flying low over the enemy airfields, Majumdar dropped the two bombs on the Japanese hangar and flew away before Japanese could recover from the surprise. On the same evening, Jumbo got bomb racks fitted on all the aircraft and next morning he led the entire squadron of Lysanders, each loaded with two 250-pound bombs over Huangshua without any fighter escort. The squadron scored direct hits on airfield buildings and a wireless station. This created quite a stir. Considering the limitation of the Lysander aircraft, it was a great show of airmanship and courage. Subsequently, numerous bombing raids were carried out over Japanese air bases at Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai. The morale of number one squadron had gone so high that the aircraft went unescorted, flying low, almost hopping over the trees, skimming around the shoulders of hills and bombing Japanese airfields in Burma. Some of the pilots of number 28 RAF squadron voluntarily flew under the leadership of Jumbo in their bombing raids. Subsequently, the squadron was moved to Rangoon and then to Lashio for providing close support to the army. At Lashio, they provided close air support to the nationalist Chinese troops of General Chiang Kai-shek. Apart from attacking the Japanese positions, the squadron gathered and provided valuable information to the Chinese 5th Army. As a token of appreciation of the invaluable work done by the squadron in that theater, General Chiang Kai-shek congratulated Jumbo for his excellent leadership and presented the pilots of number 1 squadron with golden wings. 
Majumdar had led every mission of his squadron personally. The results were so spectacular that the commander in chief, General Wevel, came to Lashio and personally congratulated squadron leader Majumdar for his leadership, for his daring performance and leadership. Squadron leader K K Majumdar was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. He was the first Indian Air Force pilot to be bestowed with this honor. After his return from Burma campaign, Majumdar was posted at air headquarters. He pursued his objective of the expansion of the Indian Air Force by establishing more training centers in India. The expansion started rapidly and Indian Air Force expanded from one squadron to nine squadrons by the beginning of 1944. Jambu was intellectually also very clever. He was responsible for the early planning and development of the Air Force in which he played a very big role. Majumdar was promoted to the rank of wing commander ahead of two senior officers to him, Subroto Mukherjee and SP Engineer. He accepted the promotion only when Subroto Mukherjee urged him to do so. He became the senior most Indian officer of the Indian Air Force in the rank of wing commander. After two years at air headquarters, his desire to fly became so intense that he volunteered to relinquish his rank as wing commander and fly with squadrons operating in Europe war theatre. In March 1944, Majumdar was sent to England and attached to number 268 Royal Air Force Fighter Reconnaissance Squadron. His job was to provide air cover to the Allied ships carrying out naval bombardment of Normandy beaches and visual photographic reconnaissance of the German troops and their movements. Jumbo soon gained reputation of an air ace and a daring flyer and a team leader. After the D-Day, Majumdar volunteered to undertake the hazardous task of photo reconnaissance of the heavily defended Falise Gap, which was the main obstacle in the advance of the Allied troops. He fearlessly flew low over the enemy defenses and brought every crucial photograph for General Montgomery. Jumbo was awarded with a bar to his DFC in 1944. He is the only Indian to be so decorated. Amongst the Indian aviators, he had the distinction of being awarded the DFC and bar. And that is something which will remain a landmark in the annals of the Air Force for a long, long time. Jumbo took great pride in the achievements of his subordinates and colleagues, which in turn gave a good name to the Indian Air Force. 25th of June 1944, Arjun Singh has just got a DFC. Jolly good show. The IAF has found its feet. Two year, years of hard preliminary work are well rewarded. On return from Europe, Jumbo was appointed as officer in charge of the Royal Indian Air Force display flight, whose job was to tour the country, giving air displays to attract the eligible young men to join the service. By this time, Jumbo was quite famous as an air ace. Life magazine had listed him as one of the 12 best pilots amongst all the Allied Air Forces. The display flights moved to Rawalpindi in mid-February 1945, where Mrs. Majumdar and his old squadron chief technical officer, Harjinder Singh, joined the party. The Chinese Air Force had organized an air show at Welton Airport, Lahore, on the 17th of February 1945 and invited Jumbo to perform aerobatics in that show. Jumbo's aerobatics were the prime attraction of the show. Jumbo had willingly accepted the invitation. 17th February 1945, the day of the air show, happened to be Jumbo's son Bambi's birthday. Jumbo's aerobatics performance was kept as the last attraction of the air show and a grand finale. 
Jumbo climbed into his hurricane aircraft and roared into the sky amongst thunderous applause and was soon performing some thrilling aerobatics and complicated turns. Suddenly, something went wrong. Jumbo's plane went into a steep dive from which it could not recover. The plane crashed in seconds and was soon engulfed in flames. The great man was no more. In the space of one tragic instant, the Indian Air Force had lost its most promising officer and the country one of its noblest sons. Flight Lieutenant Harjinder Singh retrieved the metal remnants of Jumbo's flying goggles and his harness locking pin from the burnt debris of the aircraft. They were gifted to the Indian Air Force Museum at Palam where they are now on display. The doleful remembrance of the sad and tragic end of a saga of commitment, dedication and valor. Jumbo was laid to rest in the Commonwealth War Cemetery at Lahore. Several dignitaries, including Viceroy of India, paid rich tributes to late Wing Commander K.K. Majumdar, DFCN Bar, a man of courage, great flying skills and brilliant leadership who laid the foundation of Indian Air Force. The inspiration of his example will never be wasted. His spirit shall live as long as there are young men to take up the challenge of his legacy and the trial of glory will be remembered and cherished by the Indian Air Force forever. Jumbo, a legend of the Indian Air Force, died as he always lived, doing his duty. His whole life is an everlasting example of dedication and devotion to duty. His memory shall remain an inspiration to the succeeding generations of the Indian Air Force. An epitaph engraved below the Air Force crest on Majumdar's grave at Lahore reads, No star is ever lost. We once have seen go passers by and do, if you can, as he did, a man's part in the defense of liberty. Thank you.